So you've been playing with drill through pages for a little while now, and you got to a point where you're actually using different relationship for your measures. So you might have some measures with an order date and some with like a shipping date. And both of these, you'd like to be able to go to a drill through page and use that same page to show the details. But that doesn't work out of the box. So how can you configure that? That's what this video is about. So drill through is super easy once you know the basics. And I just launched an earlier video on this. So if you missed out on it, check that one first. But if you know how it works, let me show you a scenario where you might run into trouble. So on my computer, I have one screen that shows our sales by order date. And the order date measure simply makes use of the data model I have. And the default relationship uses the date key in the calendar together with the order date key on the other part. Now I also have a, a relationship which is inactive with the ship date. And with this, I also have a measure that first of all shows our order date. That measure is total sales. It's a simple sum x that multiplies the quantity by price. But then the ship date, the ship date makes use of a different measure. So the ship date measure here, it takes the total sales and then uses the use relationship function to make sure it follows the inactive relationship that's there and makes it active at that moment. Now, when we get to this order date page, I'm able to drill through to my drill through page if I select something. So I could, for example, try and see 2001 here, drill through the next page, click on drill through. Now this exactly describes what this 2001 is and it only shows these values. But let's now say, uh, and, and what's good to note on our drill through page, I have the measure total sales and the total sales ship date. But what you will find is that this is not an ideal way of working because now it shows both of these measures. And let's say we wanna have a look at the 881 from the order date. We could right click, drill through, go to this page. And if we have both of these measures here, you'll find that there's one column for the total sales, but there's also the column with the ship date. And because both of these measures are available here, you're also gonna find lines that are not relevant for one of the measures, but are visible for the other. So for example, the first two lines are only relevant for the ship date. And if we go to the bottom, you'll find that there is also a whole bunch of lines that's only relevant for the order date. Now, I can imagine that even though you have an order date and a ship date, you would still like it to be able to navigate to the next page, only showing the relevant lines for that specific measure. So how can you solve that? Well, that's what this video is about. Let's see the steps I've done for that, and we're gonna make use of calculation groups for it today. Okay. So in my drill through page, we already suggested that the total sales and the total sales ship date, we actually need to replace one of those measures, remove it and replace it by something else. So I could, for example, take out this measure here and we have 881. But if we now go to the ship date and we wanna see this 818, we can drill through. But the only thing that happens so far is it keeps the filter context that we just saw. So we have a filter context of the color is white, the fiscal quarter is uh, quarter three, and the fiscal year is 2021. So even though we just looked at the value 818, we only see the total sales here, even though it should be 818. And that's because the measure is different. So we need to do something with this. Now, let's see how we can fix this with a calculation group. And to do that, you have to open external tools and make sure you have tabular editor installed. And in tabular editor, we're gonna make a calculation group. So you right click on tables, create calculation group. And I'll call this order date versus ship date. Now, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna make different calculation items here. So I need a new item and this one will be the, uh, let's start with the order date. And we need the measure that we're going to use to make use of the order date relationship. So in default, we could write uh, calculate. We have the selected measure. And then we could write use relationship. And we make use of the relationship between the date key 
And that relationship should be the relationship together with the order key, the order date key right there. And with that, we can close our first measure. After creating the order date part, we can then take another item and call this one ship date. And that ship date one is the identical one to this one, except for the part that we don't take the sales order date key. But this time we want to see the sales ship date key. There we go. All right. Now you can save this calculation group. And if we go back to Power BI, it will require you to make a refresh here. So make sure you refresh this. But after refreshing this, you will find that there is now a new table in your model. And that table is the order date versus shipping date one. And what you can do with this, let's go to the order date page. On the order date page, we can add a slicer. And this slicer, we are going to fill this with this new column that we created. And the column is called name. Here we go. Now, for the, I want this one to be a drop down. And let's make sure we don't have a background and that our items have a white background. Perfect. Now what's left, I just want the slicer header to be white as well. Great. That already looks good. So our table that we're looking here at has an order date in here. And if we select the order date, the numbers will remain the same. But we could also select the ship date. And between the order date and the ship date, you will see that the calculation group impacts what the values are. So what's happening is uh, with this calculation group for ship date, it takes all the measure that it finds and replaces the measure with the, with the new definition of the, the measure in the calculation group. And since this ship date one took the selected measure, but now says use relationship of the ship date, it will now do that. Now, of course, this is exactly what we needed for this page here, but let's have a quick look what effect this has for our other page. So if everything is still on order date, we can look at this 518,000 in uh, 2011 quarter three for the color red. And you will see this 518,000. But if we go to ship date and we're still at that same cell, we're supposed to see the 586,000 here. So you can again click and drill through, drill through page. And at this point, you actually see the 586,000 here. So how can this happen? The benefit of, uh, of the drill through functionality is that it holds on to your filter context. And before we were only using measures and our measures remain the same if you have the similar filter context. However, if you look at the drill through pages, Besides the color fiscal quarter and fiscal year, it now also has our calculation group in the, in the filter context. And because of that, it will take the current measure in the current filter context, but it will apply the calculation group, uh, it, it's, it's measure in there to change the numbers. So because this is now part of it, the 586,000 now shows the ship date. And the big benefit, of course, is that if you now look at each of the lines, you will not find any lines related to total sales order date, but only the ones showing it to ship date. Now, that's super powerful. And once you find out how to exactly use calculation groups, this gets your reports to a whole different level. And it saves you duplicating the pages, but it also helps in making sure you can use your slicers to impact what you show on your reports. Now, I hope that was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of the content that's coming out soon. And uh, with that, I hope to see you in my next video.